I called the November 9th uh, Board of Supervisors meeting to order. Um, asked everyone to please stand. We have Dr. Gary Housman do our invitation and please remain standing for the pledge. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful to be here tonight on this occasion. But Father, we also are, are thankful for our nation. You know that our nation has been divided. We've had a contentious election. But now the election is over. And Father, it is time to heal. And we rely on your mercy and grace to do that. Father, as we sit here tonight, use us in the way that you see fit. Let all decisions that we make not only benefit the citizens of our county, but also honor you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And again, welcome everyone that's come out tonight. Uh, we'll move right on in to our citizens' time. We have Jim Morrow from uh, 830 Old School Road. Hello, everybody. As you said, my name is Jim Morrow. I live out in Piney. Um, I, I've only lived here since the year 2000. And my wife and I live in a single wide trailer that was uh, built in 1999. Um, every year I pay the taxes on this thing, and every year the taxes go down on this thing, which they should on a single wide trailer. But in 2004, we bought a, another single wide trailer for my stepson, my wife's son. And a year later, that that thing went up. We paid nineteen thousand dollars for that trailer. A year later, it was assessed at twenty thousand five. Then, two years after that, it went up to the value of twenty two thousand four hundred. And then, four or five years after that, I assume after the five year assessment, I was told that they do that every five years. Went up to twenty four four single wide trailers do not appreciate. And I'm wondering how uh, we got one trailer that's going down in value, like all the cars that we own, and how another trailer that we got, single wide trailer, still up on blocks, just like both of them, neither one of them on a permanent foundation, both of them single wide trailers. One of them's going up in value, and the other one's going down in value. Wondering how that's happening. I and I was imagine. told that you need to show up at the supervisor's meeting because they're the ones with the answers. <laughs> yeah. Well, Who's got the answers? <laughs> we do have a process that, uh, and I'll let Stephen go through it. That, <clears throat> uh, Yeah. Have you happened to receive your new reassessment notice? I haven't gotten mine yet. I haven't gotten yet. For 2016? Not yeah. your taxes, but we've actually just gone through a reassessment. Okay. Um, and... The reason I was asking, I thought you may have received that. We uh, have been notified by the reassessment firm. They will be sending out the new values uh, on, per on real estate and things coming out on, the, on November 15th. The trailer is a different story. That's assessed through the uh, Commissioner of Revenue's office, and I cannot answer as to why that is increased in value, but I assume you have gone to the Commissioner of Revenue's office and spoke with her about it. Is it the trailer or the land that's going up in value? The trailer itself. Land's on a separate ticket. I don't understand that either. Uh, there's a woman over and you talking about over where, not where you pay your personal property taxes, but across, across the way the from it. Uh, she's the one that told me that I had to come here for the answers. She said because there was, she said there was an independent firm that evaluated trip trailers Private. evidently they come out they measure the length the width get a square footage multiply it by some value or whatever and however old it is and that's how they come up with their value 
But however, I'll, however they're doing it, I don't know how they're doing it, but it shouldn't be going up. It should be going down, just like cars. I guess you go through the DMV on cars. Well, they go through like Kelly Blue Book uh, okay. on, on cars, and they do devalue. And I thought that was something the way they done similar with oh, single wide single wide trailers. All the assessment comes from the Commissioner of Revenue. Really, the only thing that the Board of Supervisors do as far as taxes is we set the rate. Uh, the, the Commissioner of Revenue then assesses all property, whether it's personal property or uh, uh, a real estate. Now, I'm assuming that the trailer is listed in the personal, personal property. property. Uh, we set the rate for that, uh, and we can tell you what the rate is per hundred, but we don't uh, you, we don't change any values that that because that doesn't come from us. Well, from her. Uh, who decides who sets the values? She does. Commissioner of Revenue. She's the one that picks a firm or yes. all, some all, kind of business. All that the does board it? of supervisors does it sets, sets the tax rate. Right. That's that's her job to assess the value. So you guys don't and then vote on who's to gonna be office. assessing property. No. We we set the rate, the commissioner assesses it and then the treasurer is in charge you of do, collecting the taxes. You guys just set the rate per right. 100 or whatever yeah. it is, and you vote on it in the year or nay or whatever. Right. Okay. So I've been told wrong. And the commissioner is, a, you know, is an elected official. You might if I ask you what your, what your tax bill is on each of those trailers. Uh, I don't have that information. All I have is the value that they assess the trailers at. <clears throat> I wrote it down. Each trailer. Yeah. The reason I ask that question, some people in that office are telling them that it's personal property, which, as I understand the law, the trailer is personal property. Other people tell them that it's real estate, and there's a big difference in the tax rate, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's, Stephen, it's depend on how it's mounted. It's, it, it's a single it's, line? It's, yeah, it's, it's um, the rate, it, it's the correct rate. It's the rate that it's it, 49 that, cents or? Yeah, whatever, whatever it is, it's, 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 not, it's not the same rate as uh, real estate, land. Right, the personal property. It's, on, it's the same as personal yeah, 227. property. 227. Well, I don't, whatever it is, it's, it's the same rate. And, I, and I'm, and I'm not questioning the calculation of it or the, 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 what you guys vote on, I guess. The, the rate per hundred or whatever, however it's valued. But the value, your question. My is issue is that, that, a, that a single wide trailer is going up in value and it should be going down in value like a vehicle. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I don't know who you might have spoke with, but our commissioner... It was a woman out. over there yeah. that sits in the back right office. Okay. Probably. Like probably. The commissioner of revenue was on vacation. If you would like it, if you'll, your phone number may be on the list, if it is. It is. It I'll is. get that to Ms. Uh, Faye Barker, who is the commissioner of revenue, and have her to give you a call to discuss the value and, and how it is assigned. Okay. Well, sorry, she was on She was gone, so it, it, that, that may, she may be able to help out and answer your <clears> question. <throat> Well, one, like I said, one of our single wide trailers is going down in value. It's depreciating like it should, and the other one's going up in value. And she'll have the historical and, records. And I haven't got the new assessment. Uh, well, I may, it may be in the post office. I didn't check the mail today, but they went out in the last couple of days. It's what kind of foundation do you have on it? It's up on blocks. Okay. Both of them, same, both up on blocks. Neither one's a permanent foundation, so. <clears throat> Stephen, if you'll take care of that, yeah. have her to get back with you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate Charles time. Okay. Thank you. Anytime. Uh, we have Linda Myers sign up, but she's not here. I think it's y'all signed up for. She she asked me to sign her name, so y'all read a letter that she brought. Yeah, and I'm gonna ask Stephen to, to read that that she's uh, put in the board package, and then we'll have Mr. Vaughn to uh, to come and give a report on what he's. Uh, had the inspection today. Uh, the following letter dated November 3rd to the Witt County Board of Supervisors Citizens Time. Dear BOS, I'd like to address this people feedlot issue for the 117 petitioners of that community. We would like to know if any inspections have been made. If so, we'd appreciate a copy of the report. 
If not, we'd like to know when the inspection can be made and if you'd like to contact us for a tour of an adjacent farm and the degradation occurring. We have requested and would also appreciate you contacting the appropriate state agencies about this ongoing issue for our community, DEQ pollution response, etc. Please respond to those present and I will contact you shortly. Thank you. Linda Meyer. Thank you, and Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Vaughn is, did, will give a report on it. He did go out and meet with uh, some representatives today. Good evening. Yes, we. Uh, <coughs> A whole cornucopia of state agencies showed up today at 10 o'clock. I, I wondered what y'all were doing when I went up the hill. You, well, you could have stopped too. Well, if I didn't realize you were there, I probably would have. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's the Eller feedlot, and we met there at St. Peter's Road Speedwell. The Virginia Department of Agricultural and Consumer Services, or VDAX is called, was uh, represented by Mr. Darrell Marshall, who kind of has the lead on what's going on with this, and I'll get to that. Uh, Virginia Department of Environmental Quality was there, Jason McCroskey, who's Stormwater Management, Mr. Willard Keene, Jr., who's the Water Program Manager, and Mr. Mark Trent, who's also a Water Program Manager. VDOT, a couple of reps, the primary being Mr. Richard Buckingham, who was the land use permit representative for Ms. Pam Heath, who is the residency engineer that handles the land use permits. Uh, Mr. Eller was there, and he had some of his folks with him who do the work for him, and with County, I was there, and Ms. Tim Spraker, the building official, was there. Uh, Mr. Marshall came in, and he's the uh, VDAX gentleman, and he discussed the best management practices at the site were going on, and they're under the Agricultural Stewardship Act is how it's managed. So uh, VDAX has the lead on the situation out there. With county, we don't have anything in our toolbox, stormwater or ENS, to do with the situation other than getting information for the citizens and bringing it back to the board. Uh, he talked that some of the uh, property was taken out of use for, I guess, over the hill back towards Old Bank Road. There was some runoff apparently at one time, and they've taken that out of use. And apparently Mr. Eller had gone in there and he's dug a big hole right next to the new VDOT work. Now, you can't see it from the ridge because there's a well, pipe actually, sticking out actually, now. Actually, he didn't dig a hole. The hole was already there. All right. Well, it's been dammed up or there's a hole dug. It looks like it's a dug hole. <coughs> and there's a, about a 12-inch pipe sticking in there that comes out, and he's got riprap down to the state VDOT uh, ditch line. No land use permit at all. So that's why VDOT's there. Uh, VDOT wanted him to get it engineered and produce some engineering drawings and have it designed. They can check it for uh, quantity impacts, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, just a few feet beyond that is the feedlot. In one corner of the feedlot, he's allowed to go into grass. He's got a fence there with silt fence on it. And then there's a vegetative strip of well-be when, when the grass grows back before that hole in the ground. Mr. Eller went off and talked to the VDOT guys for a couple minutes while I was talking to the stormwater guys. And when he came back, Mr. Eller said he's going to take it out. So he's going to pull the pipe out and fill the hole up, which gets him out of the VDOT regulatory problem that he has with VDOT. The uh, DEQ folks and the VDAX folks said they just allow, allow that open area now to go back to vegetated strip for filter for whatever runoff is coming off of the feedlot. And DEQ is going to keep an eye on it real close to make sure that it's filtering correctly and properly and that the, you know, the uh, capu basically is not going down past the vegetated strip and into the VDOT right away and down to the pond. If that happens, then DEQ will come back and visit the situation. So bottom line is this right now. DEQ really doesn't have anything to do with it right now unless we get an off-site flow of polluted water. Uh, the county's out of it. VDOT is now out of it because, you know, the pipe's gone, so their, their water's not impacted their, their system for conveying water in the ditch. So it's really an agricultural department issue right now. And he's going to go back and put the filter strip, i.e. the grass, et cetera, back in there. It's going to be regulated by them. And bottom line is, uh, I guess it comes to see if these measures that have been taken, some of the feedlot out of service on the old bank side for some runoff or whatever he does here to filter it to make sure the water, polluted water, doesn't go over the berm now, over the top of the hill and down the VDOT road to see what happens. And it'll probably be next summer that will tell the tale. So VDAX has the lead taking that pond away right now, a dry pond actually it fills up when it's wet, is about where we're at. So that's the bottom line right now. As far as the regulators are concerned, that's the only action that's going to happen. 
any questions. You're, talk, you're talking about that if we have runoff, is that no matter how much rain we get, or is that just normal rainfall? There's no real quantity, as far as I know. Other, if, when the pond was there, there would have been some quantity elements, which would have impacted VDOT, and they would have had to design for that. But right now, it's just regular surface runoff like any other farm. Okay. So if, if, a, if there is runoff, is VDACs who the citizens should be contacting? It, 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 well, time? yes, VDACs and okay. if, if, if the state well, water... You all were saying what? V Virginia, Virginia Department, Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. VDACs, VDACs. VDACs. Okay. Sorry. So VDAC, un until, until there, it's, it's a agricultural department regulated issue until there's a known pollution <coughs> of, of the stream, then DEQ can get involved. But right now, DEQ is even out of it, the way it's coming down. Yeah. Now, is this runoff in any direction? I mean, it's there, to if, the, if it has to be into the state system. But if Duke King has runoff onto his land back there, still okay. haven't run off. Are they? Are they've been doing. They've been. We've been yeah. asking for four years. It, it's VDAC, yeah. yeah. It's so the a VDAC issue. So D, I mean, DEQ will get. What I'm saying is, if it runs, if if it rains, if it ever rains again in Spiegel, and it comes down on his property, he needs to call VDACs. Yes. Because I mean, where his property's at, we can't. You can't just drive by and see right. it, unless it comes all the way across yeah. their property. D, DEQ will get involved when when state waters get polluted. Until that time, it's an agricultural issue or a civil issue between neighbors, I guess. Well, I'm, I, you, you're talking about state water. I, did they not say last time that it had run into a creek, into a stream? Cripple Creek. Mm -hmm. and yeah. The, yeah, it's getting into the, the, yeah, the, the ditch, dry run, dry run and Old Bank and into the roadside ditches and down to the new uh, impoundment pond there on St. Peter's Road. And so the solution for that then is to pull this pipe up and, and get green space. Mm -hmm. Does VDAC, I'll use that term now that I know what it is, <laughs> does VDAC have written regulations concerning things like that? I mean, yeah, you know, so that, well, I'm sure, yeah, so that, I'm sure they do. They regulate the feedlots, so there has to be some kind of. It's an agricultural stewardship program. Right. I don't know the details of it. But that's what it falls on. I don't know what kind. They have regulations because I know Robbie had to get permitted and stuff out there with Robbie Williams. Is, but I don't know exactly what the regulations. Well, I, I guess what I'm what I'm asking is if, if there's regulations somewhere that you know, you know citizens could look at. It, I believe yeah. it's called the Agricultural Stewardship Act, and that's how VDAC, VDAC regulates what's going on on that farmland. I guess we can we can have the, the, the staff to see what kind of regulations they require for a feedlot, and we can publish them. Well, I mean, I, I I'm sure that they'd like to know. I mean, if I were to, I would, I'd like to know. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to know myself. Yeah. I don't know what the regulations are. Y'all have any questions for Mr. Baum that y'all <coughs> would like to have answered? Well, you're just about the, the pond and the runoff. It's you know. We got papers where he was supposed to put a silk fence in our in bales to keep the runoff from coming down out. And he went and put the pond in. Well, we got my, it on paper. I'm bringing papers. Well, my understanding from Mr. Baum, the pond is going to be taken out. And then there, is a, there is a silk fence. Is the silk fence supposed to go above the pond? Right, and that's, the, that's there now. The silt fence is installed. And behind that is some more vegetated area before you get to the actual feedlot proper. So that's going to stay in place, and then he's going to have a grass area where the pond is now and just let it filter. <clears throat> the water's been running off on our property. They come in there and maybe move the fence up. But the, well, over a year, it fell in, fell in behind the bale, started running off again. Well, they come in, put bales on top of that. <laughs> so we, we went up there again. They went and moved it uphill about. 15 yards, but no fence in, but some more height. Well, another year, it's going to be right back over that. Okay, uh, what we'll do is we'll get y'all the numbers that y'all need to call when this happens uh, for VDAX uh, and the regulations, and we'll get it to y'all. That's all we can do. I mean, you know, it's a state agency. Uh, that's all we, we don't have no regulation, well, we regulation do, we power over them. 
Well, I came by help to get the board of supervisors from. Yeah. I mean, we're here to help. We can get the information and the telephone numbers and the people's names that you need to get in contact with, and we don't mind doing that. We, we're, it's, that's, my opinion, that's our job for you, for us to do. And if there's anything in, in the regulations or in county ordinances that we can do, we will do that. But, you know, it's, it's our job to get you the information, in my opinion, to, to have the right telephone numbers and right people to get in contact with. If they do away with the pond and put in that green area, like this, will that help your own situation? Well, it, that's on, it, it'll help it on the state part, but still back on the other side of the hill, we still got the same thing. The hill's like this. It runs off on the state this side, and then on our property on the back side. Is there, mm -hmm. is there a pond on your side, dude? Well, Mr. Lincoln said, there he had a pond in there, and he failed to put the he bought in there, he built the pond in about eight to ten foot. And we never had no runoff. So he put that in there. When you go come through, we didn't have no water. Really? No. I'll let you be on the big bottle truck. And he's just been doing enough to get by. Is he limited to a certain number of cattle in there? Well, that's, that's still not up to us. Well, they got it on paper. He was supposed to have a 400 and he had 1500. We got that from the state, from Darrell Marshall's office. Well, that's, that was a couple of years ago. Well, that's something you need for the VDAX. Yeah. Bill, could uh, you give them a copy of that? Oh, James could not see it running down. Yeah, I have it in the office. I've got video of it running down. Well, that's a VDOT problem. Running down the road and no, this is dead. This well, that's what we thought too, but <laughs> we didn't get the state borders it becomes a DEQ problem also. Yeah. Is the VDAX, do they have an office? Is he around here? Or? Yeah, I believe he is. It's uh, Mr. Marshall. I, I got emails from him and phone number in the office. We can get the, that the, uh, Lance Yates, Yates got off the Yeah, Lance Yates was listed as the Agricultural Stewardship Program for this area and, and Daryl Marshall for another area. Uh, he's the manager, so that may have been why he came. So, right. But it's over here in the, uh, on Castle Road. Okay. It's an office. I was just curious because, I mean, I thought if you've got a, run a runoff problem, I mean, it's not, it's only going to be there for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. and then it's going to dry up. Now this, I mean, if, if they can't get there in a timely manner, they're, by the time they get there, it's going to be gone. Now this, that, that pond you put in is here. Yeah, I'm, and that's a look like it's and this is their property. Yeah, okay. There's a ridge here. And <coughs> they want to take this part of it out of service to include the runoff. Down there. Yeah, they go put the well, silt fence up here. At the top of the ridge, I wouldn't really put them to say they weren't going to have any cattle on the other side of the ridge. They have it used. But Bill, if you'll get them the numbers and name of people they can contact if, if, uh, if they're having more problems, and then and if, if they're not doing anything about it, uh, come back to us and, and we'll see what we can we can contact them and get something done. Thank you very much. We'll we can contact them. Jeff Campbell and Bill Carrico and stuff and see if the General Assembly can do something. Y'all have any other questions? Okay. Thank y'all for coming. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, seeing nobody else for citizens' time, we have closed citizens' time. Uh, next item on the agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting of October the 25th, 2016. I entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I make that motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the October 25th minutes. Any corrections or changes? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Dr. Housen? Aye. 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 I wasn't here. Aye. Aye. Uh, and the chair votes aye. Next item on the agenda is the payment of invoices. I entertain a motion to pay the invoices. So moved. I have a second. Second. 
I have a motion to second the invoice. Any board member would like to discuss or pull out? Who wanted your for uh, Virginia Tech? What was that for? Uh, extension services. Oh, okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Horney? Aye. 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 The chair votes aye. Uh, Moving right along with the old business appointments, uh, New River Regional Jail Authority, um, Mr. Dalton was the alternate, and since he has retired, uh, we need to appoint another alternate. Uh, I recommend uh, Mr. Barr as the alternate, and I'll entertain a motion to approve Mr. Barr to be the alternate. I'll make that motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion second for Mr. Byrd, County Administrator, to be the alternate on the New River Regional Jail Authority. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next, uh, Board of Equalization. <coughs> Mr. Byrd? I uh, do have two individuals that I have spoken with and that have agreed to uh, they be willing to serve if you all so desire. Uh, would really like to name all four of them at the same time and vote and elect on all four of them. Um, if anybody got that or at the latest, we, we can't put this off any later than our next day meeting to do so. Well, let's put it on the agenda for the next day meeting. And uh, well, you have two, and that's Miss Castle and uh, Miss Roberts, Cleta Roberts. Okay. That's what we so two more, one active and one off. Yes. And Mr. Willis and I have been in touch with one local real estate firm that has that done it before, um, or that we requested it. This has no interest in doing it at all. Um, no relation. <laughs> if, if you all have an idea, you want me contacting someone, let me know. I'm more than willing to. There are a couple more sort of individuals and some, I'll call them smaller type of firms or individual type of firms that may, may be able or may be interested in doing So there's active members got to be. Active member needs to be. Miss Castle could probably take care of that requirement. I handed out those requirements to you all earlier of, of meeting that, that requirement. But uh, I think it would be good to have someone from the real estate side. Okay. What is the consideration for that activity? I'll email it to you. I don't remember what we were paying a day on that. I'll look at that and see. Do you remember, Mark? And while you're doing that, about how long a period, how many hours it takes, so because with citizens, if you want somebody that don't have time to do it, you have a point right first. They need to have time to, to spend the time doing it because it takes a, it's a full schedule for the amount of time. And, it, and the amount of time often depends on how many requests you get in. So. Okay, get any names to, to Stephen before our next board meeting, for the Friday before our next <coughs> board meeting, where they can be put on the agenda. Um, with County Rescue Squad Board of Directors, we have anybody else? Uh, they 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 only like one, right? One, one standing. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Steve, Charlie, and I'll uh, you know it's here in town mostly. Uh, see if you can find somebody that's willing to serve on the board and try to get that knocked out in the next couple of meetings too. Well it could actually even go out towards the speedway area too. Yeah. You need to. Well they come all the way down to uh, the bank to the dirt all the way down to exit seventy seven. Probably the creek. No, they come to my house. They yeah. picked up the dollar. Okay. So I don't know. So I mean I, I guess I know we think Whipple, but it could be up 21 Speedwell in the Triple Creek area. And down Chapman Road. Yeah. 
Atlanta and uh, Pepper's Ferry Road. Okay, just everybody continued to search for uh, qualified members to serve on, on boards. Um, Mr. Byers, anything under old business other? Anything no, else? Okay, moving around to new business. Building and Grounds Committee. <coughs> I don't think we have any action these One item, the firearms rider on the health department lease. Yeah, that was a request that they would put it right in task for the health department. They basically with the Governor McCullough's action on the no carry in state building, they uh, our lease does not have that language in it. So in compliance, the health department has sent us the language that needs to be added into their lease that indicates that, uh, that uh, possession or carrying, whether open or concealed by any firearm, any person is prohibited in the state offices. They've already got the signs posted up there on their offices. Uh, this just goes into the agreement, into the lease agreement that we have with them. Okay. Uh, come from a uh, committee that doesn't need a second. Any questions? Do we have to vote on this? Need to amend or add, amend the lease, yes. Uh, the recommendation from the Building Grounds Committee to amend the lease to approve approval of the firearms uh, rider for the Virginia Department of Health lease agreement. I guess that's how it will be stated motion and come from uh, committee doesn't need a second. Is anything anybody else got any other questions? Hearing none I'll do a roll call vote, Dr. Hausman. No. No. Uh. 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 And the chair votes aye. Okay, uh, that's all from building the grounds. Uh, animal friendly license plates. This is for uh, people buy uh, the license plates and we get so much money back to go th toward the spade and neuter. Um, and the, is animal control, um, who do we? We, we partner with the <coughs> Land Animal Welfare League okay. and I contacted them to confirm that they are still interested and they appreciate it. Would love to be receive the funds again. So my recommendation is that accept the two hundred eighty-five dollars, and we will uh, provide that to the uh, animal with my animal welfare. Okay, do I have a motion. I make that motion. Would you include the amendment appropriate that amount also, sir? Yes, sir. The amendment appropriate, and I'm not found it yet. Two hundred eighty-five dollars. Two hundred eighty-five dollars. I have a second. Second. Any questions or discussions? Hear none. A little roll call vote. Dr. Hausman? Aye. 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 Yeah. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Uh, next item on the Dennis Mount Rogers Plains District Commission's financial statement. Hope everybody's had a chance to look over their financial statement. And does anybody have a, any questions, or Mr. Byrd, do you have any comments? No, uh, sir, I do not. Uh, Chair, I entertain a motion to accept their financial statement. I'll move to the financial statement. Have a second. Second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Horney. Aye. Yep. Aye. 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 The chair votes aye. Next item on the agenda is resolution 2016-24 FEMA assistance to firefighters grant program. Uh, Stephen, you want to? I had it here somewhere. Um, they're 
request the amount is 255 dollars and eighteen cents. Is that uh, is this work just proving this for them to apply for? Yeah, this is just a resolution that has to go with the application. Uh, this is just to let y'all know the amount that they're looking at applying for. Uh, at our last uh, fire and rescue meeting, we talked about uh, the previous grant being turned down and needing to get bottles and, and air pack. Uh, Mr. Music was able to uh, find this pretty quickly. There is a deadline coming up in November of applying for this grant. And uh, so therefore, they, uh, they gave me the resolution to go in the board package and then the next day were able to give me the amount. This is, a, this is what they're basing their estimate off of this, this quote uh, for them to apply for. Basically, this would only address two, the, the, the needs of the first two fire departments uh, that have the bottles uh, coming up for exploration and sickness. And uh, our match is 25,553. Yes, 32. we don't need to take any action now. If we receive the grant, then we then will come back and ask. Accept the grant and then appropriate money. How, how many departments did you say this was This guess is two fire departments. Yeah. And these are the, uh, this is what they're applying for to replace the air packs and, and the, the Yeah, air packs and bottles. Air packs and well, bottles. Well, that was one of the discussions that they can get by with just bottles, but the, uh, uh, the bottles that you all have are all the old steel tank bottles? Well, no, they're not steel tank bottles, but they're the 22 or 2300-pound cylinders, and these are the 4500-pound yeah. cylinders, which means you can last longer in a house fire with them. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, Joe, I mean, you can buy new bottles, but then you're going to have old air packs with new bottles, and new bottles are going to cost you probably half of what a whole air pack will cost. Maybe more than that, I don't know. Well, my problem is it's still a lot of money. It is. And we may or may not get drained. We had a lengthy discussion of fire rescue failure to remember here. In fact, I don't want to get up this a lot like another suggestion. But this drain only covers half the problem. If, if the breathing apparatus is good and you can get the bottles for half the price, why would we buy the NIOSH covered breathing apparatus? People that scuba dive use them until the NIOSH certification runs out. I mean, it's a well controlled governing group with NIOSH, isn't it? Uh, probably. Well, all breathing devices. made application for every department. Which and, was a huge number. Which was a huge number, and we did not get funded. This takes us out covering those over the next two years that addresses. The, the, the other department's models aren't in this same time frame. They're still three and four or five okay. years out on that. So that is why this came back, because our grant was so huge, the ones that got funded that large were large localities. One of the concerns on this grant application is Jason's working with all the fire departments, but apparently on the fire, fire department ID number reports and things they turn in, the numbers that are showing up online is people only responded to one call last year because the numbers haven't been updated. And that's coming through the fire department. So <clears> the, <throat> the goal is to try to, and he's working to try to get those numbers correct. So if they pull those numbers to look at them, 
uh, they can see Ivanhoe had a similar thing. Their numbers aren't up to date as well either. In fact, they're not keeping us up. So I thought they were cheap on both of those. They're shooting themselves in the foot. But this, this would take care of us for two years out, but we can apply next year to start taking care of the next one. It's not trying to avoid half the problem. It's getting a, a budget number that's manageable that we think we can get funded through the grant process. And we are working on a backup plan if this does not work. Looking at the, I guess this quote, yes. I, the, the very first item, or the, the, the breathing, the, the, the face mask, the, the harness, that sort of thing? Yes. I, I, this is where I'm a little bit confused. Did we, didn't we talk about that in Fire and Rescue that we would apply for a smaller number? Uh, because I, th I thought that one of the problems was that uh, that this grant, FEMA grant, was looking at uh, the number of seats that you have on the truck. Yes. And this is a smaller number. I mean, for example, Speedwell has 40 bottles. Right. Right. Uh, this was the 34 models to go between both of them, or 40 that it was expired. Well, I, and I'm not talking about the bottles. I understand yeah. the bottles. You know, how many? You how may many? need more than one bottle to fight a fire. Right. I, I, I mean, I'm assuming if it's an extended, if it's an extended thing. I, I guess what I'm asking: Do we need the 34 bottles, face masks? Oh, 30. The how many? 34 breathing things. How many? I, I don't have any objection to the to the bottle. I asked Mr. Music a question along the lines of what he said, of what Gene was talking about. He said, if you're getting the new bottles and trying to pair them up or match them up to the old face guards, and he had even, I think, looked at the face, the, the face shields and the mask and the things, of it, his recommendation was go with getting the entire replacement set. Well, if, if you're going to go that route, can we at least stand that where they've all got the same stuff? That is the goal. Because if you're not all like now, you can't loan face masks and bottles to other people, uh, even if you're on the same fire. A lot, a lot of the bottles are interchangeable. Or, or they used to be. Now they may not be now because some of the some of the departments may have the 4,500 bottles now. Well, one of our endeavors with the fire and rescue committee was to try to standardize and not have all these fragments that can't interchange. So let's make sure that happens. Now, my, I'm, when we get down to funding this stuff, I'd like for you to be prepared to tell me why a fire department needs a big reserve capital and we keep funding it. Y'all could pay this 10 percent. We know that. What are you going to do with that money? You can't take it with you. Well, my opinion was the 10% match, that was going to be my recommendation when it comes in. The 10% match should be coming from the department. Uh, Gene, how many, if you run all the, if you dispatch all the trucks, how many seats is that per truck? Or how many, how many, they're saying they won't find but one bottle per seat for each truck. Yeah, they were they were talking about that the other night at the fire meeting, and I want to say they said we've got 14 seats or something like that. Oh. So I, if, if you double that, if you, if you double that, two tanks per person, uh, what would you use at a fire? You can go through well now the old tanks. I don't know about these bigger or well actually they're smaller tanks, but they hold more air. But well, uh, since this is double, you can, you can go through two or three tanks. I mean, it all depends on the person a lot of times. Well, what I'm saying, if they sent this back and said they wouldn't fund but one, I mean, depending on how many seats you had per truck, are they going to fund these 34? Well, now 34 is for the two fire departments. Oh, 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 okay. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. My understanding is Jason based that number Sorry. upon those number of Numbers, seats between okay. the two departments. That makes sense. Yeah. And you said you had a secondary plan? We are working on a backup plan. You know, it involves uh, another uh, location that has bought some tanks recently that is looking at uh, possibly surplusing those tanks, but apparently they have a very, they're relatively new on the lifespan on it. So 
so we're still working on that as well. We want to confirm what it is, what the masks are, what the value is, all of that. Well, then that's another thing. Byron Springs just wanted the tanks. They said their masks and stuff were good. All they needed was the tanks. So we can get some. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we, you know, authorize yeah, just use it to apply for this. Okay, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Mr. <coughs> Rutherford, that was to approve this resolution. Correct. Yes, I'm right. Yeah, to approve the resolution 2016-24. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, the roll, roll, roll call vote. Dr. Alton? Aye. 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 Yeah. Aye. And Chair votes aye. We have, uh, I guess under other, you go bring up this resolution 2016-23. It's on the... Oh, you just want me to sign it. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I, can do that. <laughs> well, I saw everybody start to look. <laughs> I, I just I'm <laughs> the one that had it. That's okay. I need to sign it. Okay. Um, well, Mr. Uh, Chairman, under under new business, uh, one one thing we normally I think uh, uh, issue a resolution to any county team that that wins the state championship. And I understand that George Whip won the uh, golf yes. state championship. So. Miss Collins has that prepared. Oh, okay. And they'll be here the Okay. Well, my work's done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, remind everybody that uh, Friday is a holiday, Veterans Day. Uh, greet a veteran. Thank them for their service. Uh, anything else? Is there anything that's happening on Veterans Day? Did they have, I know they had the Veterans Day Parade last Saturday in Rural Retreat. Uh, are they having anything? I just got an email from the chamber today. Um, the town is doing something at the meeting center at 11 o'clock on Friday. Okay. So I got the honor of doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. The Virginia Department of Veterans Services has an open house tomorrow at, at 12 noon. I'm going to that if I get back from the jail meeting. You're going to that if you get out of jail, though. Yeah. <laughs> that kept me yet down there, so I hope it won't keep me. Um, Before we run, we have one more informational thing by Bill here. Yeah. Bill, could you give us an update on the permit for the grading and are we going to have dirt moving Friday? Possible. I, uh, well, I got a surprise a couple of days ago when I found out there were two stormwater permits sitting over in Richmond for some reason. Apparently the surveyor for Lane back in July submitted a registration statement. When uh, the lady in Richmond, Miss uh, Mitch Hobson, she sent me an email and had two attached. I looked at it and realized right away what had happened. So we were walking on each other, only ours should be the right one. So I told her, disregard the first one, keep up with the second one. Well, all that's going on in the background, Jason uh, down in Abington finished up with Lane and the revisions to the plans and the grading plan and all that. And they're all approved. So he sent those drawings to the, yesterday overnighted them to Richmond. I got an email today from the approver in Richmond that said that everything's there. They've issued the plan approval for the Apex Center. They've got a number. They were processing and applying the permit fee, which was already sent in by Baker, and those two marry up. And they got an email from the plan reviewer, Mr. Chapman, that they are to receive the record copy of the plans in the central office. And then she said, we will hold issuing the permit until the record copy of the plans have been received and recorded. So I called down to a lane group real quick and talked to the clerk over there, the secretary, and she looked up on their FedEx or UPS or Postal Service website. And today at 1227 p.m. in the central office of DEQ in Richmond, they went into the front desk. So Richmond has it, and all she has to do is look at that marry everything up and then tell us we're good to go. Now, 
That could be tomorrow. That could be Friday. I don't know. But everything that we could possibly do is sitting in the regulator's hand right now, ready to go. Well, the reason I want to hear that from you is we've lost another 10 days of good weather. We've opted to not use them for administration, correct? Mm -hmm. So nobody has hold of the till. There's nobody running this boat. And we need to even get this worked out by the next board meeting or, or let's decide what personnel changes we're going to make, whether it's the, the contractor, our contractor being flame is dropping the ball, which I think they've been paid to do that. It has nothing to do with contract administration. Do you agree with that? Right. It was all planned revisions to meet the regulatory requirements. And it, time just goes on because there's absolutely no urgency involved. The hours turn into days, turn into weeks, turn into months. And look at all the good weather we've wasted. Waiting on a simple process that could have been handled a whole lot different. Everything's ready to go at the site. I went up there last Friday and inspected everything. And all the equipment sitting there. There's probably $3 million of equipment sitting there burning burning money. And as soon as we give them the high sign, they're ready to go. I talk to Dennis Ponder every day. He calls. We're back and forth communicating to make sure where are we at, where we're at, who's got what's been done. So I'm crossing my fingers. Tomorrow I'm going to get an email or a phone call that says we're, we're ready. We can go. So our, our earth movement contractor is urgent piece talking to you daily. Mm -hmm. The missing link here is the Lane Group having a sense of urgency. They're not talking to you. I, I think we'll talk to them every day. And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Because somebody's dealt with the original agencies for 35 years. If you don't deal with them almost every day, they sort of go along. Yeah, that was part of the issue. Friday's a dead day for them. If it doesn't come out tomorrow, it'll be Monday when they even get around to looking at it. Right. And part of the issue, as you know, early on was the, the resubmittal regulatory timeline. And, of course, Mr. Chapman told us where it was in the queue, and they said the state had until November 3rd to do everything they did. And he made it on the day, of course, which is why we're standing here right now waiting for somebody in Richmond to receive a FedEx package this afternoon and tell us we're good to go. And, and it's aggravating. I mean, the plan was submitted. Um, the final plan uh, of, to us, and it was submitted to the State Office of Stormwater Management on June 30th, 2016. The plans were submitted all within the, the timelines that we have on there. It's just this state regulation review is it's slow. And it's Bill's been contacting them. Uh, I've been talking to Patty Bobby. We've been talking to Jonathan and Abby. It is aggravating. But we have been doing all we can to push this project. So, Bill, if you, if you don't get it by 2 or 3 o'clock tomorrow, can you call them? Yep, I've got the ladies' phone up. I call her in the morning anyway. And say, you, I, I sent her an email. As soon as I got that, I turned right around and said, I understand it's in your building. Heads up. Because she might not be looking for it to come up from the mail room. Yeah, call, call <laughs> in the morning. Yep. As soon as you get here, as soon as they get in and try to prod them along. To Are they in the Monroe building? Yeah, they're on 9th Street. Yep. I've known the mail being lost in that office for a month and a half. That's why I sent her an email telling her that it is. Somebody downstairs, a lady at the front desk, signed it in. It is in your building. Well, call them in the morning and see if they've received it and uh, see if they'll shoot the permit back before we can. And we got millions of dollars worth of equipment sitting up here. Idle. We do. Yes, sir. Roger. And thank you, Bill, for all you do. Okay, uh, we have one more thing here. Um, Mr. Byrd's resignation from the Mountain Cap Board of Directors. I got a letter. Uh, we need to come up with a replacement for that board. Uh, does anybody on this board would like to serve on that board? Or do I want to be a, a bad guy just to point somebody? 
This this can be a, a citizen. It it can it it's it is a tripartite board and basically they've got government appointees, citizen appointees, and then their client group of appointees. And this is an appointee from the government group. Um, ideally they like for it to be somebody in government, but it it, it does not happen. Well I I I cannot my wife serves on the board, so that would be kind of a so I can't say it. I can't serve on the board. And generally, they meet about every other month. Their general schedule. And they do do a lot of good work. And, and their main uh, uh, things preschool. Uh, what they fund in how many counties? The Head Start. Head, uh, the Head Start, Head Start in Smith, with and uh, Blaine County. Well, it seemed my deal to me that a former educator would be there. I work in the hospital. This is a man's we'll great a job. We'll give you a chance to fix them while they're little. Then. <laughs> hey, I'm through trying to fix kids. <laughs> uh, Stephen, does anybody else in the office uh, and the staff that you think would be good to serve on the board? Right off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone, and I'll check and see. Esther Hyder just left from the Department of Social Services. She was on the client section. I think they found somebody else in DSS to go on there. I'll confirm that and see and make certain there's maybe not somebody else in the complex that might be a, a good appointment to work with. Okay. I'll talk to you after. Okay, uh, that is all on Jim. You have your informational package. Uh, any other board member or staff have anything to bring before the board at this time? I got a question. Yes, sir. There was something in here from DMV about W9s. No, oh, that was all on that. Um, uh, is that part of the dog thing? The dog thing, yeah. Okay. It just didn't, yeah, it didn't, it, it uh, didn't click in my head that it went together, and I was thinking, did we miss something that? I thought maybe I fell asleep for part of the meeting. Okay. Well, here nothing else to come for the board. We are adjourned.